class of 2010. You're listening to WICR. And Chelsea Ian Sack. Chelsea Harris. <laughs> Chelsea Sacks, yes. <laughs> Chelsea Sack Show. Yep, that makes sense. <laughs> Well, we are back. Well, you know, you, we we got Chelsea Sachs, Ian Harris. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're just mixing everything up here. It is mix up Tuesday. It's so early in the morning that my coffee didn't even kick in. So, well, Sachs, did your coffee kick in yet? A little bit. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to wake up a little. But, you know, <laughs> that's why it's called the morning mix here. We're just oh, yeah. mixing everything up. As, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Well, <laughs> oh, my God. Chelsea, stuttering still. Chelsea, we have a ton of of entertainment stuff to go over my special for the end of our time here today and before i go to lab tear talk to me so tears rolling down the cheek oh my god you have no idea but i actually like my lab class but anyway we are talking about tom cruise and his new movie mission impossible today you sent me this last night and i was like oh my goodness i love mission impossible so even better. And in the new movie, it is Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. There's a very bold stunt that Mr. Tom Cruise performs. He is dangling off the side of an A400 plane. And what are your thoughts on that? Because that's a little bit... T- I don't know about... It. I've seen a lot of stunts. that Tom Cruise is known for his stunts. But this is a little bit excessive here, Mr. Sachs. What do you think? Well, I think that... You know, this is where you see how important the stunt people are in movies. Because, mm-hmm. you know, when, you, when, when you're when you watching a movie, you see, oh, you know, this actor doing this crazy thing and, and this actor doing, you know, this and that. And, mm-hmm. and it's like, wow, how are they doing that? A lot of times it's, it's stuntmen who mm-hmm. are doing it. And, you know, when an, when an actor actually does his own stunts, I think mm-hmm. that's really commendable. I I remember hearing uh, I forgot what movie it was. I think it might have been John Cena the Marine. <gasps> John Cena. Bella I, Twins. I I love John Cena. I love me some Bella Twins and some John Cena. But keep going. <laughs> uh, oh, we 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 can make the morning show all WWE. I don't. I only watch the. I'm a reality show junkie, and I watch oh, okay. Total Divas. Yeah, so that's yeah, yeah. where I get my All right. Bella Twins, John Cena action drama. More like drama, because I feel like that's just old drama. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. But anyway, getting back to on track. getting back on track to the whole stunt thing. I know that in John Cena's movie The Marine, I think he did all of his own stunts, and I remember hearing. What, around when the movie came out that that was like a big thing because let's say if something happened to him when he was doing one of the stunts that, that would looked- hold up the the whole production of the movie oh yeah. so uh, you know that's really where you see how important a stuntman is because you know say a stuntman gets hurt it, it it in terms of the grand scheme of the movie he's not as important as the lead actor yeah, because John Cena, he's like a big guy, so I would figure, and he's in w, the the Divas, whatever thing, WWE. WWE. Yeah, that's where I, that's how much reality television I watch. But he looks like a big enough guy to do his own stunts because he's throwing around, throwing into tables, throwing into chairs, throwing into the arena, ring, same thing. But for Tom Hanks, he's a little 52-year-old man who's just there. He professed his love on the couch about Katie Holmes if he, way back when. But I, he, but he's in like, these types of movies. He's in a lot of action thrillers. So I would think that he would do his own stunts. But this one's not pushing it. He's 52 years old. He has his little child, Suri. That, that's still pushing it for me, you know? But I, I've seen, saw the, uh, the movie clip, and it was, wow. I don't really watch the Mission Impossible movies. But what? That looks, I actually want to buy a ticket right now to go see it. And it doesn't even come out till July 31st. Yeah, July thirty, so. July thirty first. So that looks pretty crazy. What about you, Mr. Sachs? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I haven't watched many of the Mission Impossible movies. I kind of have a, I kind of like the series, even yeah. though I haven't really, you mm-hmm. know, seen a lot of them. Mm-hmm. So I, I think, I think it's it's pretty cool, and and you know, I I think I have a little bit more respect for Tom Cruise oh. now, knowing that, oh yeah, knowing that that's actually him doing this stunt 
So it it's it kind of goes both ways. It's like you know, stunt man. That's his job. You know that mm. that it's it's, it's 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 an important role. But you know, to actually know that that's the real actor doing that. That's cool. That that that, that kind of kind of makes it a little a little cooler for me. And the money incentive for this movie is ginormous anyway so why not do your own stunt and be courageous and go on an a400 plane and dangle off it why not would you do that what would you get a stunt man mm. well it, it <laughs> I, I think it depends on how much i'm compensated for it <laughs> i so, mean if 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 you're giving me a hundred dollars i'd say you can keep your hundred dollars <laughs> but if you're giving me a few million i'd say right. Yeah, what's the risk? It's a two billion dollar franchise, so he's a two billion dollar, two billion dollars to go dangle off a plane like Tom Cruise in. So you would do it for that? Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> you know, the, then worse it happens, the money goes to my family. <laughs> Aw, the money goes to your family. How precious to you, Mister <laughs> Professor Sachs, <laughs> and Mama and Papa Sachs. Oh good God! But he did say desperate times come in the actual trailer. Said desperate times come for desperate measures. I'm like. This is a little bit of a not so desperate measure, but yeah, it's a desperate I, measure I, I, for I, money. I, I don't exactly call filming a movie a desperate time. Oh yeah, a desperate time for money. Yeah, <laughs> that could well <laughs> not that he really needs. Right, it. he's a billionaire. I mean, we, we are talking about Tom Cruise, not some little person walking around Iona College. We're talking about Tom Cruise. Right. Well, we're since we're talking about. Big time movie actors and actresses. Uh, I know. Let's jump on to our next story. Yes. And that is Julie Andrews announcing that she's going to write her second memoir. Yes. Her first memoir came out in 2008 Ooh, called Home that. About Her Childhood and Early Years in Show Business. This one is going <laughs> to cover more of her career and, and really take a, a delve into all of her acting roles. Yay. It should be released in September of 2017. So We'll be out of college by then. Two and a half years from now. Mm -hmm. And Chelsea, what are some of your favorite Julie Andrews movies? Okay. And, and do I dare ask you for your top choice? Uh, my top choice. I But before we get to my favorites, first of all, I've never seen The Sound of Music. I'm not American. I live under a rock. I've never seen it. But I've never seen it, so that can't be my favorite. My favorite movie was during my one of my days off this break. It was on ABC Family at 11 o'clock at night. I was watching Princess Diaries. The cutest little movie. It's an ultimate chick flick. I, you've probably seen it once in the blue moon. Have you ever seen Princess Diaries? I've seen it a few times. Oh, my God. You have seen it. I've and seen it a few times. I and actually, movie. you're stealing one of my favorites. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry, because I love that movie when I when it came out way back when. I'm actually I might talk about this on my show on Thursday. You'll probably sit on this one anyway, and we'll talk about it more. But she's just so cute. I just want like my grandmother. My grandmother's passed away, and like I want to steal Julie Andrews and like put her in my pocket and put her in my family, and we can make her Italian so she can make that Sunday sauce and meatballs. But in that movie, that's what I want to do to her because she is so cute. She's like she's business because she's the queen and she's gonna get a princess. And if I were my grandma, I want me straight cut cut straight to it. But then at the end of the day, she eats a corn dog and she's like plays with a little wrestling thing. And she's just a fun human being in that movie. I love her. I love that movie. That's my number one. The number two, I had to look this one up because I didn't really know Julie Andrew movies except for The Sound of Music and Princess Diaries. She was in Despicable Me. She was in Despicable Me, and she was the weird noses, the main character grew, his mother. And his mother in the movie was so cute. I didn't know that was her. She was just a great grandmother character. In the 2000s, she evolved into a grandmother, a mother, grandmother character, and I just want to put her in my pocket, especially <laughs> after her accent in that movie. If you've seen Despicable Me, you know what I'm talking about. The accent is just too precious. I can't. <laughs> and then when she, when he adopts the three little the children, and the one that's like, I fluff, it's so fluffy, I want to die. She like, she warms up to the fact that he's like, a father role, and he's, she's actually proud of him, and I just love her in it. She's so perfect. I, I can't. <laughs> Hashtag I can't. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about? Cause do you, you know, I didn't know she was in Despicable Me. Did you? No. Uh, when, 
you know, you and I were doing just about the same exact things last night. I was looking up Julie Andrews movies. I knew The Sound of Music. I knew Mary Poppins. I knew Princess Diaries. But I didn't know really many F, you know, outside of those three. Mm-hmm. And I look up and I see Despicable Me. Yeah. And I say to myself, really? Yeah, that's same exact reaction. So, you know, it, it's... It, it, it is kind of cool. And that's that's one of the things that I love about Hollywood is that you have mm-hmm. these actors and actresses that you know in certain roles. Mm-hmm. And then you watch other movies and there they are in, you know, more supporting roles. And it's it, it, it's just so awesome when there's mm-hmm. such a great blend of, you know, actors, you know, from this genre, actors, yeah. you know, from that genre coming together in movies. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's truly beautiful. As for me, I think I would have to go with a with a, a top two for Julie Andrews, Ooh. similar to what you said, Princess Diary. Because <laughs> you're a pretty princess. Because <laughs> yes, it, it's a chick flick, but it uh, I'm not afraid to say it. I <laughs> liked that movie, and it's on documentation, my friends. It, it is. It is. It is all <laughs> over stream. the internet now. I like <laughs> the Princess Diaries, and. Uh, I wish I would have got that in my Snapchat. (laughs) (laughs) My other top Julie Andrews movie, I would have to go with The Sound of Music. Historically, one of the, you know, Mm -hmm. most acclaimed movies. And it, it, you know, I I had heard about it for a while. Yeah. And I hadn't seen it. And and I said, you know what? Finally, it's, it's time i watch it mm-hmm. and it is definitely worth the two two and a half hours how two and a half hours i i think so ain't and nobody got time for that <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it if you, when you do sit down to watch it it is that good it's worth it it's a spoonful of sugar <laughs> it is <laughs> it, just think about it it's julie andrews <laughs> she's so precious <laughs> before ner- nose surgery and all that jazz but I'm, i maybe i will sit down and watch it over easter break that's coming up you know, I will watch it, Isaac, and I will eat a sp- spoonful of sugar with my coffee as I watch it. <laughs> so what else is there to talk about before we well, wrap the show up? Uh, well, we're in a Hollywood mode. And oh, yeah. let's, That's where we belong, Ian Let's Zach. jump over to the Late Late Show debut of James Corden last night. Uh, and, you know, he, <laughs> he started his Excuse tenure me. there with a bang. Bang, 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 bang. Last bang, night, bang, he bang. had Tom Cruise and Mila Kunis on the show. Uh, Mila Kunis. And uh, Mila Kunis kind of maybe a little bit had an announcement. If you like a thing, she would have put a ring on it. If you like... Yeah, I should stop singing on WICR because Merch will probably abuse me for this one. But she is married, apparently, to Ashton Kutcher because they had the little BB, and I was so excited about that little BB. I'm pretty sure it's a girl. Not 100% sure. Don't quote me on that one. But she was coy about it. She's like, you either are married or you aren't married. And she was like, maybe. But then Tom Cruise, not Tom Cruise, whoa, the other guy. Tom my, Hanks. Tom Hanks. Yep, that's where my head's in the gutter right now because of Tom Cruise. But she had a ring on it. And honey, you saw that ring from a mile away because it was shining bright like a diamond, as Rihanna once said. And it, I think she is married. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. I like that couple dating all the way back to their time Me together too. on that 70s show. Me too. You know, I, they, they just seemed like such a good couple. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it only makes sense that they're married. I'm so happy. It's like a child. Isn't it your childhood memories of that 70s show? You're like, you see them on TV on Nickelodeon. Like, oh, puppies. They're a cute little couple. And they make me very happy and sad and mushy because I'm, you know me I'm a sucker for love and this is just me being a sucker for love and the fact that she's being extremely coy about it I'm like you go Mila Kunis and like she went through her flings with she's been around to say the least in Hollywood and I'm happy she settled down to a perfect man like Ash, Ashton Kutcher what well, do you think? well you know what celebrity hasn't been around Hollywood Taylor Swift. <laughs> That's another day. <laughs> another day. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole show to itself. Oh, <laughs> Mila, Cameron, but they've all probably been with Ashton too. <laughs> the small world, after all. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I mean, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty glad that they're 
together, I, I think it's uh, they make a, a very cute couple. And, you know, it, it, I, I'm, I'm glad for it. Well, in speaking of Ashton Kutcher, in mm-hmm. one of his most recent gigs, and, and this is the, the last story that we have for today. Tear. In one of his most recent gigs, he played, he portrayed Steve Jobs. Uh-oh. And there we go with this one. Steve Jobs, uh, you know, the the legendary founder of Apple. Mm-hmm. And since he's since his passing, there have been a so, few biographies yeah. come out so about many. him. Mm-hmm. And there was, you know, one a few years ago, I think, called Steve jo- or Jobs, I think. Jobs, haha, funny. And now there's a new book coming out entitled Becoming Steve Jobs, The mm-hmm. Evolution of a Reckless Upstart into a Visionary Leader. And in fact, and, he is. You know, I th- and I think it's it's to be released today. It is? Yeah. That's so, right, because Amazon had it today. Right. So, and, you know, this book has, has gotten some mixed reviews. I think some mm. people have said that it makes Steve Jobs be portrayed as as a you know kind of ruthless mean Mm -hmm. leader and others have said that you know it it looks like likable he's a likable guy and Mm -hmm. and you know this is the steve jobs that they remember Mm -hmm. so you know i I, it's it's, (laughs) mixed review mixed feelings on it it, uh, i really don't know what to say you know i didn't know steve jobs so i I didn't know steve jobs uh, i i can only figure out you know make an opinion on him based on what I, you know, read or hear or mm-hmm. watch about him. So, uh, I have to say, I haven't read the book. Me it's though. It's only 10 o'clock on, on the day that it comes out, so mm-hmm. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. I, I know I'm slacking, but... Uh, over, you got your Kindle, and we'll buy it for you on your Kindle. <laughs> for over, so you can read over Easter break, because I think I might be doing that, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, you know, quickly, any any opinions on Steve Jobs? I just think his the proof is in the pudding, and his pudding is all these are all these products. And I can only imagine the worth work ethic that he had growing up to push these products. And he had like uh, outside um, organizations come in and rebuild some of the Apple products. But it takes a great I don't care if ruthless mean because all if you're a boss, you gotta be if if you're not mean, people are gonna take advantage of you. And he didn't let anyone take advantage of him because look how successful his business is. For heaven's sakes, I have my MacBook Pro right here. I have my Apple, my cracked iPhone, and he's doing something right because he's produced. Even though his he is he passed away, his legacy still lives on in everything that most Americans, especially kids, college kids our age do. So I don't care what people say. He, the proof is in the pudding. So let him write about him. Let him talk about him. He did what he had to do to be successful, and everyone's just a hater. Absolutely. Well, that determination and hard work, life lessons that you can take away from Steve Jobs' success. Mm-hmm. Chelsea, words of wisdom. Oh, yeah. Sending us out here on the WICR Morning, Morning Show Mix. Hell yeah. Thank you so much, Ian Sachs, for having me. And I will see you on Thursday for Throwback Thursdays with Chelsea Taylor Harris. And Ian Sachs will be on again because we're talking about movies this week. So. Well, Chelsea, whenever I'm on the air, there's an invitation for you. I will be. If you need me at 8 a.m., I will be here at 8 a.m., my friend. But I got to go to lab. It's been fun, WICR. Ian Sachs, I'll take it back to you. Thank you guys so much for having me. And stay tuned. Spring Gonzalez coming up with her show right on the other side of the break. This is a test of the emergency broadcast system.